Cat 2023 slot one LRDI. Uh, I, I simply didn't like this set. It was a this this slot. I'm very glad in the exam I didn't get this because some 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 ambiguity. There was some error and all of that. And so we're going to grit and bear through all of this and solve the these four sets. Let's attack this. Our faculty members in a management school can belong to one of four departments: finance and accounting, marketing and strategy, operations and quants, and behavior and human resources. The numbers of faculty members in FNA, MNS, ONQ, and BNH departments are 9, 7, 5, and 3, respectively. Professor Pakrasi, Professor Kureshi, Professor Ramaswamy, and Professor Samuel are four members of the school's faculty who were candidates for the post of the dean of the school. Nice. PQRS. I don't remember. Pakrasi, Kureshi, and all that. Only one of the candidates was from ONQ. ONQ's operations and quants and that had five people. The five member uh, department had only one candidate. Every faculty member including the four candidates voted for the post. Oh, nice. So 9 plus 7, 16 plus 5, 21 plus 3, 24 candidates are there. 24 professors are there. Uh, they get the totally 24 votes. All of them vote including the candidates. In each department, all the faculty members who were not candidates voted for the same candidate. Okay, okay. So in F and A, if there were if there were two candidates, hypothetically, the remaining seven voted for the same candidate. Nice. The rules for the election are listed below. There cannot be more than two candidates from a single department. O and Q has one, maybe one 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 one, or two one one zero, something like that. A candidate vote cannot vote for himself or herself. Understandable in college elections. A faculty members cannot vote for a candidate from their own department, which is nice. They cannot open, they cannot vote for them. So F and A guy winning election is unlikely. A ton of F and A votes are going to somebody else. And after the election, it was observed that Professor Pakrasi received three votes. Oh nice. Kureshi received 14 votes. Nice. Ramaswamy received 6 votes and Samuel received 1 vote. Usually I like adding them up to just to see if they reconcile. 3 plus 14, 17, 23, 24. Yeah, 24 votes have come in. Professor Pakrasi voted for Professor Ramaswamy, Kureshi for Samuel, Ramaswamy for Kureshi and Samuel for Pakrasi. Each professor has voted for one professor. Each one can cast only one vote. Each professor has received one vote. P votes for R, Q for S, R for Q and S for P. Each professor has received one vote from professors, one professorial vote, if I can call it that. And that's the part I missed when I was solving. I didn't grab onto that. Right. Nice. P voted for R, Q voted for S, R voted for Q, and S voted for P. I like to get grab hold of the constraints in my own style. This I'm simplifying this. Only one of the candidates was from O and Q. So if O and Q had one candidate and had only one candidate. So O and Q have five people. One candidate and four others. These four voted together in a bunch. The candidate might or might not have voted with them. Nice. Every faculty member, including the four, we have read all of these constraints. I've just rewritten them in my own head so that we can we can view them very clearly. And now this, I think, the, the, the thing that's going to unlock this in many ways, I think, the two numbers. Generally, whenever I'm given numbers like this, uh, the extremes unlock things. And so this is nice. My gut feel is F and A has to be sitting there. Without F and A, we may not be able to manage 14 votes. There are only 24 totally. You leave this whole bugger out. There are nine people out. Out of the 15, he has to get 14, which is a, which is a lot. I would worry about. So I'm thinking this should have F and A. We'll come back to it. This is very clear. Professor S received one vote from Q, from Qureshi. But one, none of the other votes. One group of candidates voting for S did not happen. Professor Pakrasi has received one professor vote and one other department has voted from, for him. That department we can guess pretty easily if you look at it. He's got, it couldn't have been O and Q because O and Q had only one professor. Remaining four should have voted in a bunch. It gets only three votes. It could have been MNS or F and A. Lots of potential voters. At least seven here, at least five there. It has to have been PNH. The extremes really work well for us. Right? Each professor got one professor vote. I'm thinking of votes. P, Q, R, S, each of them got one professor vote. So two other votes, non-prof votes, 13 
non prof votes five non prof votes zero non prof votes very like very simple that means b and h voted for p zero departments voted for q now cut field says f and a voted for q i'm going to think assume f and a didn't vote for q can we still add up to 13 b and q is gone b and h is gone F and A didn't vote. Can M and S and O and Q add up to 13? Not possible. 7 plus 5 is 12. All 5 are not available. Only 4 are available. The non-professor votes. So F and A is definitely there for Q. Nice. Lovely. S has 0 departments. We've got F and A here. Now, F and A could have given Professor Q 8 votes or 9 votes. Right? Could not have given him only, could they have given him only 7? We'll have to think about it. But F and A could not have been only 7. Because there would have been still remaining. Professor Q gets only 1 Professor vote. 13 we'll need to find out. This is 4 or 5. Remaining. 8 or 9, remaining 4 or 5. O and Q department has only 4 votes. M and S departments could have had five and two professors who vote differently. So this could have been eight and eight plus five adding up to 13 or nine plus four adding up to 13. Right? Eight plus five, nine plus four. So you could have got eight votes from uh, F and A and five votes from M and S. All non-professor votes from M and S. 8 from here and then R gets 5 non-professor votes. Right? So this fellow gets from B and H. In order to unlock Q, maybe I'll think about R. R could not have got all non-professor votes from O and Q. There are only 4. And only 4 non-professor votes are there in R, in O and Q. Because one person is definitely the candidate. And R gets 5 non-professor votes, not from O and Q. This makes life super simple. BNH is already out, not O and Q. Could not have been F and A because if it were F and A, then you would have get eight or nine or seven votes. Cannot get five votes, or these five are essentially coming from MNS. MNS has two professors. Only then five non-professor votes would be there. That means this comes from O and Q. O and Q, there are four non-professor votes. F and A should have nine. That means there is no professor from F and A who is standing for election. So F and A has nine non-professor votes, all of which go to Q, Qureshi. And MNS has five non-professor votes because there's two professors standing in election, all of which go to R. B and Q has two non-professor votes because one professor is standing for election, that goes to P. S, has, S gets one vote and no nothing from the departments. Nice, you wrapped this up beautifully. M and S, there are two profs, O and Q, one prof, B and H, one prof. Now we'll look to unlock this. We'll have to figure out, hey, uh, who votes for whom? We'll have to figure that part out. Right? P voted for R. Right? So P and R are not from the same department. Right? Q voted for S. Q and S are not in the same department. R voted for Q. R and Q are not from the same department. S voted for P. S and P are not in the same department. R cannot be in the same department as P and Q. S cannot be in the same department as P and Q. R and S could be together. P, Q different. P and Q could be together. R and S different. So I, could, I cannot have a scenario where P and R are together. Q and R are together. R, S could be together. Likewise, we cannot have Q and S, P and S, R, S could be together. If R is in the two member group, he or she can only be with S. If P were part of the two member group, P cannot be with R or S, can only be with Q. Likewise, Q cannot be with R and S, Q can only be with P. So we could have a scenario where this is P, Q, we have R and S here, or this is R, S. 
and we have P and Q here. Nice, beautiful. Now PQ going here, P gets all B and H votes, possible. Q gets votes from F and A and O and Q, possible, nicely done. R gets votes from M and S, possible. S doesn't get any department vote, S can be anywhere. So R could be here, S could be here, both are possible. This scenario, R and S both from M and S, R gets the M and S votes, so R could not be from M and S. So this is ruled out. So we have PQ sitting in M and S, both of them, and then R and S in O and Q and B and H, but that could be either way. R could be in O and Q, getting M and S votes, or B and H getting M and S votes, S can be anywhere. One professor has voted for S, which is uh, Q. Right? Nobody else has voted for S, so there's no department constraint for S. S could be anywhere. This is possible. R, S, S, R, both are possible. P, Q have to be together. Right? Lovely set. I had a tough, tough, tough time. I'm happier when I'm, when I'm adding, subtracting, multiplying, manipulating numbers and and when it's, it's mathematical, when it's, when it's just a construct. I had a tough time unraveling this, unraveling this, and just understanding the constraints. But, but, but it's actually a doable set, not my kind. Which two candidates can belong to the same department? It's possible. P and S, not possible. P and Q, possible. Q and R, not possible. R and S, not possible. Q and R, R and S, not possible. P and Q possible, choice two, done. Choice P, done. Which of the following can be the number of votes that Professor Qureshi received from a single department? Nine plus four, 13. We got that very clearly. Looking for either nine or four, nine is here, done. If Professor Samuel belongs to M and H, sorry, P and H, then this is S, this is R. Which of the following statements is R true? Stop. Statement A, Professor Pakrasi belongs to MNS, true. Professor Ramaswamy belongs to ONQ, true. Both are true. P to MNS, R to ONQ, both are true. Both statements A and B, choice A. What best can be concluded from about the candidate from ONQ? Either Ramaswamy or Samuel. Not this, not this, not this, this. One of the two. Which of the following statements is R2? Non-candidates from MNS voted for Professor Qureshi. No, Professor Qureshi is from MNS. Non-candidates from MNS voted for Professor Ramaswamy. Five. Non-candidates from F and A voted for Professor Qureshi. Yes, indeed. Everybody from F and A voted for Professor Qureshi. They were all non-candidates. Statement B is true. A is not true. Only A. Only B. Sorry. Then. Lovely. I want to go to the next set. Let's attack this. Five restaurants coded R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5 gave integer ratings to five gig workers. Ullas, Vasu, Waman, Xavier, and Yusuf. I really like this UVW, XYZ. Sorry, UVW, XY, not Z. Five restaurants, five people, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, UVW, XY. I hate it. And question says, Abhishek, Abhinandan, Abhyukt, and all that. So it's not just A, A, B, it's same letter, it becomes a pain. Now I'm very clear. UVW, XY. Who are, whichever one of you ever goes to setting a question paper moves to the dark side, please don't paint us with all fine names starting with R or S. Give us A, B, C, D, E, P, Q, R, S, T. We love you for that. Right? The means of the rating given by R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5 were 3.4, 2.2, 3.8, 2.8, and 3.4. Five restaurants, five people, one to five integer ratings. So the means of the ratings given are so far, are like this. The summary statistics of these ratings for the five workers is given below. Mean rating for Ullas is 2.2, Vasu is 3.8, 3.4, 3.6, 2.6. .6. So we have mean rating that the gig workers get, mean rating that the restaurants have given. So what R1 has given to UVW, XY, we have a mean. How much Ullas has got from R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, we have a mean. Median rating that is two. Modal rating is two. A range of rating is three. What is the range of rating? Range of rating is defined as different difference between maximum and minimum. So ton of stuff about what Ullas has received. 
I looked at this and the first median, you arrange the sequence in ascending order or descending order. The middle term is the median. Very important to know, median of 1, 2, 3 is 2. Median of 1, 1, 4 is 1. So you can, it's maybe possible that is you have fine number that are A less than B less than C less than D less than E. But it's not required to define a median. A less than or equal to B less than or equal to C less than or equal to D less than or equal to E. C is still the median. Sometimes we think median and third term should be distinct, not required. Modal rating, mode is the, rate, the number in a statistical sample that appears the most frequently. That means in Ulnas's ratings, two appears most frequently. So two could appear twice, other numbers could appear once each. Two could appear thrice, and others could appear once or twice. Four times and one other. But two occur, occurs more frequently than others. I looked at this and I was worried. I thought if I have a sequence that is 1, 2, 2, 4, 4. 2 appears twice. 4 also appears twice. Which of these would have you defined the mean mode? If the mode were 2, does that preclude the scenario that 4 is also a mode? I was worried about it. I looked at it and said, look, 2 is a mode. Might it be possible that this is multimodal? Median is unique. Mean is unique. Mean is a number. Need not be an element of the set. Likewise, median is a number. It may be the element of a set, it may not be. If it's an even number of elements, it need not even be an element in the set. So, median and mean are numbers. Mode is a number denoting the most frequently occurring element. Technically speaking, a sample could be multimodal. Multiple elements could occur with the same frame frequency, each being higher than everything else. Right? So, I was worried about that. This made it clear. Yusuf has two modes, 1 and 4. That means Yusuf has got 1, 1, 4, 4. 1 and 4 both occur more frequently than others and equal number of times. So multimodal is mentioned here. That means 2 is a unique mode. Very happy, reassured by that. And so there's lots of given by this, this sample. The following is partial information about ratings of 1 to 1 and 5 awarded by the restaurants to the workers. R1 awarded a rating of 5 to Vaman, as did R2 to Xavier, R3 to Vaman and Xavier and R5 to Vasu. R1 awarded a rating of 1 to Ullas, as did R2 to Vaman and Yusuf and R3 to Yusuf. This is individual data point which you need to fix it. I can straight away sense, I need to put R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, U, V, W, X, Y and then try to make sense of the data. I think the restaurant to individual data, this is going to give us more than those. So I think we can carve out Ullas, Vasu, Vaman, Xavier, Yusuf information better than we can carve out R1, R2, R3, R4, R5 for Ullas. That kind of sequence. So I'm going to attack what is simpler. R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. U, V, W, X, Y. Mean is 2.2, 3.8, 3.4, 3.6, 2.8. I don't, I don't work well with mean. So I'm going to say, hey, the total is 11. Total is 19. Total is 17. Total is 18, total is 13. We know that also, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, 17, 11, 19, 14, 17. Generally, I like to reconcile the numbers just to know I've not made any calculation mistake. 30, 47, 65, 78, 31, 50, 61, 78. Yeah, nice, good. Both add up to 78. I'm very happy I've not made, chances are I've not made some mistake. Make two mistakes correspondingly, right? Now let's look at this, we fill this in. The totals are 11, 19, 17, 18, and 13. The median is 2, mode is 2, range is 3. And 2 occurs twice at least. Median is also 2, the third term is 2. I could have a scenario where I have 2, 2, 2 or 1, 2, 2. And the range is 3. Suppose, hypothetically, I had 2, 2, 2, then the highest one should be 5, 2, 2, 2, 5 and some number in between. 2, 2, 2 and 5 adds up to 11. There's no room to include something here. This is not the scenario. So I'm going to say, hey, this one didn't work. So I'm looking at a scenario where I'm looking at 1, 1, sorry, 1, 2, 2. And so I'm thinking about 1, 2, 2. For this one, where should I write this? I'm thinking 1, 2, 2. 
number can I just let me write just here or here 1 2 2 the range is 3 the maximum should be 4 1 2 2 dash 4 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5 plus 4 is 9 the total is 11 bring about 1 triple 2 4 Ulla has got 1 triple 2 4. Let's look at this next one Pasu or Yusuf. Yusuf has more just 1 and 4, median is 3, 2 ones, 2 fours, and a 3. So I know what Yusuf has got. Yusuf has got 1, 1, 3, 4, 4, adding up to 8, 10, 13, 2. Lovely, that's done. The all fine numbers I've got. Basu, median is 4, mode is 4, median is 4, middle term is 4, mode is 4, at least twice. We could have 4, 4, 4 or 5, 4, 4, range is 3. Suppose it were 4, 4, 4, this should be 1. 4 plus 4 plus 4 is 12, 12 plus 1 is 13, the remaining number should be 6. 6. That's not possible, I cannot have 1, 6, 4, 4, 4. So this should be 5. So the range is 2, so the numbers are 2, dash, 4, 4, 5. 2 plus 4, 6 plus 4, 10 plus 5, 15, plus 4, 19, 2 triple 4, 5 is what Basu has got. In some order, I don't know how, 2 triple 4, 5 is what Basu has got. Let's go to Vaman. Mode is 5, at least 2 5s. Median is 4. I have a 4, 5, 5 sitting with me beautifully. The range is 4, the first number is 1. 1 dash 4, 5, 5, adding up to 17. 5 plus 5 is 10, plus 5 is 15, 1, 2, 4, 5, 5. Once again, median is 4, mode is 5. I have a 4, 5, 5 sitting with me. Range is 4, 1 before that. Total should add up to 18. 1, 4, 5, 5, 5 is 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15. This number should be 3. So just looking at this data, we've carved out the 5 elements that should sit here in some order mind you we don't know the order we don't know which one is given two which one is given four which one is given one if not we don't have that but we know that these are the five numbers for each of these case u v w x y and we've deduced that taken this process to outline that nice so we've got these numbers sitting here quite beautifully R1 I wanted a rating of 5 to woman. R1 5 to woman. Okay. R2 to Xavier. R2 Xavier. R3 to woman and Xavier. R3 to woman and Xavier. Okay. And R5 to Vasu. R1 I wanted a rating of 1 to Ullas. 1. As did R2 to woman and Yusuf. R2 to woman and Yusuf. And R3 to Yusuf. Nice. We filled all of this in. Let's see. 1, triple 2, 4 sitting here. 1, 2, 4, 5, 5 sitting here. 1, 3, 4, 5, 5 sitting here. 1, 1, 3, 4, 4 sitting here. Adding up to 17, 11, 19 that way. Let's see where, which one we can carve out. There's something that opens up. Let's see. This is 5. 3 numbers we know here. 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11. These two add up to 8. So these two should add up to 8 totally. I, I could have 2 and 4 only. It cannot be 2. It has to be 4. This is 4. This is 4. This is 4. Likewise in this sequence, 1, 5, 1 adds up to 7. These two should add up to 4. I cannot put a 4 here. This has to be a 2. This has to be a 2. Nice. Lovely. So I put a 2 here. 2 here. This is 2. Same similar logic 5 plus 5 plus 1 is 11, 8 more remaining. This cannot be 2, so this is 4, this is 4, this is 4. 2 triple 4 5, no, 2 and 5 are taken. This is 4, this is 4. 
filling data rapidly this whole row is filled this whole row is filled let's see we fill this column 1 2 4 2 2 this entire thing is filled 2 triple 4 5 5 1 5 we've got lovely so we need to have a 2 1 4 sitting here One three four here, three four four here. Oops, say, still not easy. One plus four plus five is uh, ten. We have seventeen totally. Only threes and fours are there. This is a three slash four. This is a four slash three. Nice, lovely. Five one five are taken. Two and four are remaining. These two add up to two plus four is six. Suppose I put a four here. This will add up to 10. I have only 14 totally. I could have 1 and 3. 4, 1, 3. That's possible. In which case, 5, 1, 5, 5, 1, 5, 4. This should be a 2, adding up to 17. 5, 2, 5 adds up to 9. I need eight more. I'll put a four here and a four here. The fives are already taken. One plus four is five. Ten, fifteen. Fifteen plus three. This won't be a four. It means it can't be this. This is one possibility. And four, one, three, two, four, four, one, three. Ten, eleven, fourteen. One, three, four, five, five. 1, 1, 3, 4, 4. Yep, that adds up. 10, 13, 14, 18, that adds up. 1, 3, 4, 5, 5 is fine. 1, 1, 3, 4, 4 is fine. 1, 2, 4, 5, 5 is fine. This is one possibility. I'm going to put a 2 here and a 4 here. The other way around. We'll see what happens then. You put a 2 here. This is one possibility. I'm going to erase everything here. And say, put a 2 here and a 4 here. 2 plus 4 plus 2 is 8. We need to add up to 6. 5s are gone. It has to be a 3 and a 3. This should be a 4. This should be a 4. 2 plus 5 is 7. Plus 4, 11. Plus 4, 15. This should be a 2. We don't have a 2. So 2 plus 5, 7. Plus 4, 11. Plus 2, 13. Plus 4, 17. That works. This should be a 2. But we don't have a 2 in this column. This is not possible. So we should have had a scenario. This is 4, this is 2, everything else fills itself. I just bunk 1 in and then work the rest. 2, 4, 4, 2. 2, 4, 2. You fill the entire grid. Once you fill the entire grid, you can just answer the question after that. And so I, my starting point was playing with a 4 and 2. But I very well said, let me put 3 and 4 here, fill the rest in. And then arrive at a conclusion. If we put 4 and 3 here, it will contradict. It won't work. So start with one thing, fill everything in, and then do the other thing. One will work, one will not work, or both could work, in which case we have two grids. Somewhere we, we deduce and, and go for it there. So 4 and 2 works here in this sequence. 2 and 4 does not work. How many individual ratings cannot be determined from the above formation? Zero. We've got everything. Completely one grid. So how many workers did R2 give a rating of 4? R2. No force there. What rating did R1 give to Xavier? 3. What are the median of the ratings given by R3 to the 5 workers? R3. 14455. 4, 5. Median is 4. Which among the following restaurants gave its median rating to exactly one of the workers? R5. R5 has given 22445, four, median is 4, not R5. R2 has given 11225, four, median is 2, not R2. R3 has given 14455, four, five, five, median is 4, not R3. 
I'm getting worried. R4 is given 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. Median is 3. The answer. Only to one person. 3, done. True. Lovely. Let's do the next one. A visa processing office, VPO, accepts visa applications in four categories. US, UK, Schengen and others. The applications are scheduled for processing in 20, 15 minute slots starting at 9 a.m. and ending at 2 p.m. I didn't read this 20. I had to derive 20 and I was a little unsure throughout. 20, 15 minute slots. So 9 to 10 is 4 slots. 5 hours are 4 slots each. 20 slots. Yeah, nice. 10 applications are scheduled for in each slot. Okay. 4 categories, 10 applications in each slot. Nice. There are 10 counters in the office, 4 dedicated to US, 2 each for UK, Schengen and others. Okay. Applicants are called in for processing sequentially on a first come first serve basis. They come in. Whenever a counter gets freed for their category. So if I am in the UK counter, if my counter is free, I look up and go, who is here? 3 people are here. Who came first? Whose appointment was there in the first slot? Who came first in that sequence? I'll call them in. Okay. The processing time for an application is the same within each category. That is, the US could have 14 minutes per visa. UK could have 11 minutes. Others could have 7 minutes. And Schengen could have 19 minutes. Okay. But it may vary across the categories. Each US and UK application requests 10 minutes of processing time. That's given. US application, UK application, 10 minutes each. Depending on the number of applications in a category and the time required to process an application for that category, it is possible that an applicant for a slot may be processed later. Yeah, the Schengen application time is 19 minutes. And there are two people that come here, there are two slots in Schengen. The slot is only 15 minutes, it will spill over. If it spills over, I'll take them up in the next slot. On a particular day, Ira, Vijay and Nandini were scheduled for Schengen visa processing in that order. Ira first, Vijay second, Nandini third. They came and entered in that order or they were scheduled in that order. They had a 9.15 am slot but entered the VPO at 9.20 am. 9.15 am slot entered at 9.20 in the order Ira, Ira, Vijay and Nandini for Schengen. When they entered the office, exactly 6 out of the 10 quarters were either processing applications or had finished processing one and ready to start processing the next. So they were either processing, they were in the middle of processing, or they were ready and waiting for the next one to, to come. They finished processing one, they were ready for the next one to, to come at 9.20. The other way of thinking about this, four of the counters at 9.20 are not processing anything. And so they're they are uh, they're kind of free and not ready to take the next application. They are free and waiting. Free and taking a break, not waiting for the next one. Mahira and Osman were scheduled in the 9.30 am slot on that day for visa processing in the others category. So these three are for Schengen, those two are for others. The following additional information is known about that day. All slots were full. And all slots were full. It was a packed day. People are running out of the country to holiday. And the economy should be doing well. Or they are running out of the country to run out of the country. In which case the economy is not doing well. Fine. So let's, not, let's not worry about that. The number of US applications was the same in all the slots. The same was true for other three categories. So in one slot there are four US applicants. All Throughout each slot there are four US applicants. The slot is... 9 to 9.15, 915, 915 to 9.30, 9.30, 9.45, something like that. 50% of the applicants, applications were US applicants. This is super useful. There are 10 counters, 20 slots, totally 200 applicants, totally on that day. 10 into 20, 200. Out of the 200, half were for US. 100 applicants are there for US. All applicants except Ira, Vijay and Nandini arrived on time. So embarrassing for them, not for us. Vijay was called to a counter at 9.25 a.m. And so this is important, this is important. This is probably going to be important in figuring out how exactly the internal sequence work. When you, when you draw what can be called a Gantt chart. 
and how does the processing come when does one enter when does one leave if you're doing all that then this i think this is where it comes in us 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 uk uk schengen schengen others others right now 15 minutes slot 9 to 9 15 and so on i'm calling this a slot each of this a counter that's the language they are using so 10 counters 20 slots 200 applications right lovely first come first serve each us and uk we've captured all this all slots were full this all slots were full threw me off in this question um, all slots were full there are 10 applicants in each slot 200 totally 10 counters 10 applicants in each slot so the way the math is working is totally 20 into 10 200 applicants applications get processed in that day half of them are us so 100 are us equal number of applicants came in each slot 100 divided by 20 is 5 5 us applicants came in each slot and so out of the total 200 100 were us all slots were full uh, this threw me off dramatically and i'll tell you why all slots were full what they mean in this question is 20 slots each having 10 applicants each so 200 applicants totally if you have 200 applicants, I would say you have 200 applicants. If you have 10 applicants in each slot, I would say you have 10 applicants in each slot. Suppose you say all slots were full. My brain processes it as 4 US applicants, 2 UK applicants, 2 Schengen, 2 others. These have to be full. If I have a counter not full, then I would say the slot is not full. And that's not what they meant. They meant in this question, 20 slots, 10 applicants each. Each slot, there are 10 applicants. This is a slot. Each slot, there are 10 applicants. Five of them are US. 10 applicants totally. That's what they meant. I was really thrown off by this completely. I simply couldn't wind my head around. 10 slots, only four are US. In each slot, five American applicants are there. Those five have to be accommodated in this four. Only five others are there, six counters. How in the wide world is this slot full? That's my thought process and I got um, hammered at there. I just simply couldn't recover from there. Right. Anyway, so 20 slots each having 10 applicants each. US applicants are 100, 5 per slot. Now, we know that Ira, Vijay and Nandini applied for Schengen. So in that, and they were, their slot was 9.15 am. So in the 9.50 to 9.30 thing, there were three Schengen applicants. That means in one slot, there were at least three Schengen applicants because there were these three are Schengen, maybe two more were Schengen, at least three in each slot. Remember, in each slot, number of applications from each category is a constant. So in any one given slot, number of US applicants is five. Number of Schengen applicants is at least three. So in one slot, at least three. This slot, at least three. This slot, at least three. Should be all equal. All three or all four. US applicants, five, 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 and so on. And we know that two people, M and O, Moshira and Osman, yeah, maybe I'm mixing up the names, they came for the 930 slot. Sorry, Mahira and Osman were scheduled for the 930 slot for others. That means 930 slot, at least two. That means at least two, at least two, and so on. Totally there are 10, five are US, at least three are Schengen, at least two are others. Adding up to 10 is exactly three, exactly two. Breakthrough. That means after 10 applicants coming in each slot, five are US applicants, three are Schengen, two are others, which means zero UK applicants are there. And so I had a tough time winding my head around that because that means this slot at least three and at least two that means a uk applicant slot completely throughout is at zero there's no applicant coming from uk to the two uk counters and so at least two are from others at least three are from schengen five are from us for sure 
5 plus 3 plus 2 is 10. We have only 10. So exactly 5 for US, exactly 3 for Schengen, exactly 2 for others, nothing for UK. Nice. Processing time for the US is 10 minutes. UK is 10 minutes, but we don't care. For Schengen and others, we don't know. Vijay is called in at 9.25. So he comes at 9.20 and he's called in at 9.25. And so Vijay is the applicant number five for Schengen because he comes at a 9.15 slot, but he's after Ira. Ira is the fourth applicant. Vijay is the fifth applicant from Schengen. Lovely. How many UK applications were scheduled on that day? Zero. In my head, I simply couldn't reconcile the fact that there were zero UK applicants and all slots were full. I would look at this and go, at any point of time, the two guys sitting in the UK counter are Vela. How can we say the slot is full? But hey, my silly interpretation is not the way to go. The textbook way is this. If I were setting the paper, I would make it far less ambiguous. They're not letting me set the paper, at least not yet. That day shall soon come. Right. Lovely. So enough of the whining, enough of the rant. Let's go to the next one. What are the maximum possible value of the total time required to process all applications in the others category on that day? Very nice question. Right. Very nice question. So we have to use some of the other information. So Vijay or Vinod, Vijay, Vijay. Vijay goes in at 9.25, but Vijay is in the Schengen category. That's not going to give me something about others. When Ira, Vijay and Nandini come in, Six counters are working. Right? Six counters are working, of which four are US and the two UK ones are not working at 9.20. The two UK ones are not working. They're never working. I mean, it's not a statement against British employees. Just saying, in this instance, the UK counters are not working. The US workers, 9 to 9.10, they, they have somebody. 9 to 9.10, they have somebody. 9 to 9.10, they have somebody. 9 to 9.10, they have somebody. The fifth guy that comes from the US applicant in slot one is also going to be working. And slot two, these are all slot one. The slot two guys would have come in at 9.15 and gone in here, gone in here, gone in here. Then the other slot two guy would have gone here. This is two, 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 two. 9.20 to 9.30 tenths here. Oopsie, let me just check that out. Fine. So the US counters at 9.20 are all occupied. They're all, at, if you had come at 9.13, there have been three guys who are unoccupied. Possible. But at 9.20, all four of them are occupied. They are addressing something. They are either in the middle are just ready to welcome the next person. Waiting, ready, ready to fire. UK ones are not there at all. Two other counters, six out of the 10 counters were occupied. In the Schengen, these three people come at 9.20 and they are not taken in. Ira, Vijay and Nandini. Maybe one of them is taken in, but Vijay goes only at 9.25. He comes in at 9.20 the counter were free, he would have gone in, right? for sure. That means he couldn't go in. That means 9.20, the two Schengen counters were occupied. Maybe Ira got in, but definitely not Vijay, therefore not Nandini. So the two Schengen counters in some sequence, like this, Some sequence, they were also occupied at 9.20. Nice. Now let's come to others. So six counters were occupied or ready to fire, which is US and Schengen. UK is out of the picture. Nobody's working. In the other category, at 9.20, the other categories were twiddling their thumbs, which means the 9.15 applications are already done which means the 9 o'clock application didn't spill over. The 9 o'clock application had spilled over beyond 9.15. Then there's no way in hell they'll be unoccupied. The 9 o'clock meeting itself goes till 9.16. The moment it gets over, the 9.15 guys will come. So the time taken is definitely less than 15. So the two guys in the other category, they get over really quickly. 
9 15 2 new guys come the counter is empty they go in and start they also complete by 9 20 so by 9 20 they are also completing that means the category time taken for others is less than or equal to 5 minutes 9 15 to 9 20 maximum but 9 20 the two others go because they're saying done done for this 15 minutes 10 minute car rest later fine be happy to wait and happy to enjoy myself and so that's what the other category is saying. So the time taken per other visa is less than or equal to five. The maximum possible total time nearest to its integer value request to process all applications in the other category. In each slot, there are two others applications, 10 slots. So there are 20 others applications. Maximum time taken is five per application, 100 minutes. 20 slots per counter, 40 slots totally, 100 minutes each. Total time is 200 minutes. So less than or equal to 5 minutes. Maximum time taken per other category person is 5. There are 20 slots in the day. So each counter can possibly process for 20 into 500 minutes. Two counters, 100 plus 100, 200. 100 here, 100 here. 200 minutes is the maximum they are working. Still a good place to work. Which of the following is the closest to the time when Nandini's application process got over? Oh, nice. Nandini is from the Schengen category and Vijay gets his shot at 9.25. Very interesting. So, all of them come in at 9.20 and at 9.20, Vijay does not automatically get a slot. He gets only at 9.25. But he gets at 9.25. And so the three people who come to Schengen drawn a line here to show where the US thing ends equal slot. We're going to do this something similar to Schengen. US have drawn because I know it's 10 minute chunks. Schengen, we don't know how much it is, but I can sense that it is less than 15 minutes. There are more than 15 minutes. Then it goes on till here. It goes on till here. And then the person three is waiting. That person comes, takes here. Then Ira comes in even at 920. Vijay can't get called at 9.25. Impossible. And Ira has come in at 9.20. Ira will start at 9.20 earliest. This will be more than 9.30. That will be more than 9.30 for Ira to finish. No way Vijay can start at 9.25. Vijay is the fifth applicant, remember. But not more than... It's not more than 15. And so it's some number less than 15. So let's say candidate 1 goes here. Two goes here. Candidate three from the Schengen slot who came at 9 a.m. will go immediately here. Nice. Candidate four is Ira. She could not have gone before 9.15. She would have gotten to go at exactly 9.15. However, she comes only at 9.20, so she couldn't have gone at 9.15. She'll start at 9.20 and go here. Maybe it'll go beyond or finish within that, we don't know. This is candidate number four, which is Ira. Now, candidate number five and six are in by 9.20. And then at 9.20, Vijay doesn't get to go in. Vijay has not gone in, Nandini has not gone in. That we know for sure. Vijay goes in at this time slot. This is candidate 5. This is Vijay. Vijay goes in and enters exactly at 9.25. Right? And then candidate 6 will start from here and here. This is Nandini. I don't know whether it will end before or after. I don't know. I've just drawn an approximate thing. Now, before Vijay goes in, two candidates have gone in and they've gone in back to back with no gap in between, mind you, because three candidates have come in the first slot. After one finishes, three goes in immediately. And he starts at 9.25. In the first 25 minutes, two candidates get processed. Brilliant. So this length is 12.5 minutes. This is 12.5. This is 12.5. This is 12.5. Vijay goes in at 9.25, gets completed by 9.37.5. Candidate number 2 goes at 9, finishes by 9, 12.5. Ira should have started by 9.15, but starts only at 9.20. So, Ira starts at 9.20, ends at 9.32.5. So, 
which is when Nandini starts. She starts at 9.32.5. She'll finish at 9.41. As it turns out, at that exact line, it should have been here. I didn't know exactly, so I was drawing away. Which I have drawn till here. You might have drawn till here, but the math tells us that Nandini starts her meeting at 9.32.5 and finishes it at 9.45. One and two, three, and then four starts at 9.20, five sets here, six goes there, beyond. It turns out that five ends at 9.37.5, yeah, 9.37.5, six begins at 9.32.5, ends at 9.45. Which of the following statements is false? The application process was Mahira was completed before Nandini's. Process of Osman was completed before Vijay's. Process of Osman was completed before 9.45. Application process of Mahira was started after Nandini. Look at this. We've gone to Nandini chart. The other chart is very simple. At 9, 2 people. 9.15, 2 people. 9.30, 2 people. 9.45, 2 people. Okay. And each of them gets completed in fewer than 5 minutes. And the application process of Mahira was completed before Nandini's. Mahira starts at 9.30, yeah, yeah, Nandini ends at 9.45, definitely, this is true, for sure. The application process was Osman was completed before Vijay's, Vijay's ends at 9.37.5, Osman should have been finished before 9.35, less than or equal to 5 minutes, true. The application process was Osman was completed before 9.45, yeah, yeah, before 9.35, on or before 9.35, true. The application process of Mahira started after Nandini's. Nandini starts at 9.32.5. Mahira starts at 9.30 before Nandini's. This is false. This is an answer choice. When did the application processing for all US applicants get over on that day? Oh, it's a pain. I have to figure this out step by step. I've drawn the idea. 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5. Slot 1 at 9.20. At 9, sorry, at 9.10, at 9.10, four applicants get finished. And then the fifth applicant alone starts at 9.10. The next slots five applicants, that is applicant number 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 overall. They don't start immediately because they enter only at 9.15. So this will be three people from the second slot that come. The fourth one will start straight away at 9.20. Fifth one will end like this. One, two, three, get over. Starting at 9.15, ending at 9.25. Four, get starts at 9.20, ends at 9.30. Five, starts at 9.25, ends at 9.35. Nice. In the third slot, one, two, three, start exactly at 9.30. 4 will start here and 5 will go here. The next slot 1, 2, 3 will be here. 4 will be here. 5 will be here. 1, 2, 3, 4 here, 5 here. If you think about it, if you pause and process, we see that three start on time, end on time nicely. Fourth one starts five minutes late but ends within the time slot. Fifth one has to be done necessarily after finishing one in the time slot, meeting starts in that stretch. So one will spill over. The fifth applicant at 9.45 will end only after 10, exactly at 10.5. The fifth applicant from 9.30 will end at 9.35. The fifth applicant from 9 o'clock will end at 9.20. The fifth applicant from 9.30 will end at 9.50. So every slot spills over by five minutes. So when did the applicant process for all US applicants get over that day? 2, 5 p.m. The final slots ended at 2, ends at 2 p.m. Five people would have come at 1.45. Three of them will finish by 1.55. One guy will finish at 2. One counter alone will finish at 2 5. So the, all applicants will end at 2 5 pm.
The schematic diagram given below shows 12 rectangular houses in a housing complex. House numbers are mentioned in the rectangles representing the houses A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2, D1, D2, E1, E2, F1, F2. The houses are located in six columns A through F and two rows, row 1, row 2. Houses are divided into two blocks XX and YY, well nicely named 12 blocks. The diagram also shows two roads. This is a road, this is a road, road outside and road between these two blocks. Some of the houses are occupied, the remaining ones are vacant and are the only ones available for sale. Occupied houses are not up for sale. The road adjacency value of a house is the number of its sites adjacent to a road. For example, the road adjacency values of C2, F2 and B1 are 2, 1 and 0 respectively. C2, F2, B1. C2 is 2, F2 is 1, B1 is 0. Road adjacency, number of roads next to C2, this and this 2, next to D2 will also be 2. F1 is 1, only this road, A2 is 1, B2 is 1. This is 0, this is 1, this is 1, this is 1, this is 0, this is 0. Road adjacency, nice. The neighbor count of a house is the number of sites of that house adjacent to occupied houses in the same block. Very interesting. Occupied houses in the same block. For example, E1 and C1 can have the maximum possible neighbor counts of 3 and 2 respectively. E1 can have three houses at neighbor, C1 can have two. Maximum, we are not saying house adjacency for E1 is three. It could be three, it cannot be four, three, two or one or zero. The base price of a vacant house is 10 lakh, the house does not have a parking space and 12 if it does. The quoted price in lakhs of rupees of a vacant house is calculated as base price plus 5 into road adjacency plus 3 into neighbor count. That's why I wound my head around this. 5 into road adjacency, I get it. If you're near a road, it's a plus. 2 into 3 into neighbor count. So neighbors are there and not vacant, it's a plus. So you have a neighbor, it's a good thing. Your, your value increases. Base price is 10 or 12, depending on whether there's a parking lot or not. The following information is also known. The maximum quoted price of a house in block XX is 24 lakhs. The minimum quoted price of a house in block YY is 15 lakhs. And one such house is in column E. Nice. Row 1 has two occupied houses, one in each block. That means four are vacant, totally. Both houses in column E are vacant. Each of column D and F has at least one occupied house. Nice. There's only one house with parking space in block YY. Nice. I can't obviously remember all of this. I'm going to think about attack row adjacency and column adjacency and uh, neighbor. Row adjacency we've already put. Road adjacency, not row adjacency. Road adjacency. This bugger is two. This bugger is two. Two roads. Only those two are two. These two are one, one. This is one. This is one, one, one. This is zero, 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 zero. Fill in road adjacency, that's done. Nice and simple. Next, what are we going to attack? We're going to think about neighbors. And just remember, this is potential neighbors, not actual neighbor count. For this, it is two. For this, it is two. This potential neighbor is three. For this potential neighbor is three. Two, two. Same scenario here. Two. 2, 3, 3, 2, 2. Remember the ones in purple refer to the road adjacency. The ones in red refer to the maximum possible potential neighbor adjacency. Neighbor adjacency kicks in. Neighbor count kicks in only if the house is occupied. Otherwise, no. Lovely. Now let's go to this. Both houses in column E are vacant. So, empty. Empty. Each of column D and F has at least one occupied house. So at least one is occupied. Occupied. I'll remember that. Hmm. 
nice we've got this i think the first one the maximum quoted price of a house in block xx is 24 lakhs 24 lakhs a very interesting number each of these base prices is 10 or 12. now the road adjacency we know the road adjacency were zero this will be 10 slash 12 plus 6 maximum plus 9 maximum cannot go to 24. 10 or 12 plus 5 into road adjacency plus 3 into neighbor count this should be the price if road adjacency is 0 then 10 plus 12 plus even 9 cannot take us this is not it this is not it for maximum and road agency is 1 10 plus 5 could be 15 12 plus 5 could be 17 potentially two neighbors 17 plus 6 23 maximum is 23 not possible our highest is 24 here again i think this should also be not possible 8 10 or 12 plus 5 12 or 17 plus 6 23 not possible one of these two and this seems to be the most likely heavyweight right two road adjacencies uh, road adjacency is heavy you get 10 lakhs for that two road adjacencies plus 10 or 12 so just that will take them to 22 or 20 plus potential neighbors potential neighbors is three per neighbor could add up to 0 6 or 3 this is where the kicker is 20 plus 3 22 plus 3 23 or 25 plus 6 26 or 28 we'll never get 24 this is not a multiple of 3 24 is a multiple of 3 i add 0 3 6 i'm not going to get there not this only this fellow now base could be 10 10 plus 1 5 is 15 the base is 15 or 17 plus something it takes us to 24 plus a multiple of 3 15 plus a multiple of 3 could be 24 17 plus a multiple of 3 cannot be 24 so this is 15 no parking space three neighbors and one road adjacency 10 plus 5 plus 9 is 24 that's what's happening here so these three are occupied this is unoccupied and cost 24 lakhs and straight away we've got a ton of information and so we can calculate a ton of other things based on this beautiful row one has two occupied houses one in each block this is occupied only one in this block not occupied not occupied done these two are unoccupied anyway lovely brilliant so we've got Block XX clearly, three occupied, three unoccupied. Everything else we can figure out after that. I think the minimum will open up something for us. The minimum quoted price of a house in block YY is 15 lakh and one such house is in column EE. One of these two has to cost 15. This has no road adjacency. And so 10 or 12 is the base price going up to 15. So we could have a scenario where E1 is 12 plus 1 into 3 or E2 add up to 15, road adjacency is 5 plus minimum base price is 10, 15 plus 0 neighbor adjacency. These are the possibilities. So either E1 which is 12 plus one neighbor or E2 is 10 plus one road adjacency and zero neighbors. Okay. So zero neighbors are very powerful things. I'm going to explore that. I'm going to say, hey, for a second, let's shelve this. Let's see if this can come good. This comes good. These two are unoccupied. This is unoccupied. This is unoccupied. And remember, we know for a fact that at least one of these two is occupied, at least one of these two is occupied. Each of column D and F has at least one occupied house. That means they should be occupied, they should be occupied. That's not possible. Why is it not possible? Because row one has two occupied houses, one in each block. Therefore, this is not possible. 15 plus 0 into 3 doesn't work. All three are unoccupied. That means these two have to be occupied. Both of them cannot be occupied. So this fellow does not work. This only works. So E1 has one neighbor 
it is uh, occupied and a parking lot as well base price 12 and one neighbor right? now that neighbor could be f1 or d1 one of the two e2 is not a neighbor we know that so if f1 were the neighbor then this is occupied this should be unoccupied and then we can figure out the rest and so that means d2 should have at least one should be occupied and we can take it from there or d1 were occupied i mean f1 is unoccupied and we can build from there and now if f1 were unoccupied hypothetically why am i going towards that because f1 has no road adjacency none and so and we know that in block yy there's only one house with parking this house has parking we know that for sure so that house e1 has parking we know that b2 does not have parking we figured that out already so no other house can have parking f1 could have an adjacency of two which is not occupied we know that so maximum adjacency possible is one if f2 were occupied 10 is the base price no road adjacency one neighbor count 10 plus 3 13 if f1 were vacant then f1's price would be 13 that's not possible because the minimum price here is 15 so f1 if it were vacant it should have a price of more than 15 so f1 if it were vacant it would cost only 13 so f1 is not vacant that means f1 is occupied so f1 is occupied d1 has to be vacant so this is like this and this is that means this is occupied because at least one should be there in D, column D. So we take this, we build this, and then we put a tick here as well. We know for sure that F1 is occupied. Therefore, D1 is unoccupied. At least one is occupied in column D. So D2 has to be occupied. F2, could it be occupied? Yes, at least one in F2. And if F2 standalone, could have 10 plus 1 15 minimum and one neighbor 18 more than 15 already 18 so f2 if it were unoccupied would have a base price would have a quoted price of 18 that is fine more than 15 if it were occupied doesn't have a quoted price but f1 will still stay normal all good and so f1 is occupied so there's no notion of quoted price i don't verify that so f2 may or may not be occupied both work How many houses are vacant in block XX? Three. Which of the following houses are definitely occupied? F2 and A2. F2 and A2. A2 is occupied. F2 we don't know. May or may not be. D2 and B2. Which are the following? Definitely occupied. B2 is not occupied. D2 is occupied, but B2 is not. D2 and B1. B1 is occupied, D2 is occupied. Yes, both are occupied. A1 and D2. A1 is not occupied, D2 is occupied, not this. This question was mentioned incorrectly. Just, just, just such a kicker, such a nightmare. There were two correct answers possible. It drove uh, students mad during the exam. It drove me mad when I was trying to solve this. And then I googled and googled and googled and found out that there was some error in this question. And they had given some pitiable explanation for it. It's a shame, really. But hey, again, I'm not in a very complaining mood, even though it doesn't come out like that. So we have fixed this question to make it meaningful. But this was not the question in its original avatar in the exam. Which of the following options best describes the number of vacant houses in row 2? Row 2, this is vacant, this is vacant, that may or may not be vacant. Two are vacant for sure, two or three, done. What are the maximum possible quoted price in lakhs of rupees? for a vacant house in column E. Column E, this cost 15, that we know. This one, this could also be vacant. One road adjacency, no parking, because only one thing, 10. 
for the base price plus 5 for road adjacency plus 2 into 3 6 assuming this is also vacant no no we get for neighbors not for vacant houses i'm thinking like a major introvert i shouldn't be thinking like that i'm so <laughs> this should be occupied we be very careful with this it should be occupied which is when we'll get maximum price for the house E2 will get a base price of 10 because no parking there, only one house has parking, plus road adjacency of 5, plus 2 neighbors, 2 into 3, 6, 10 plus 5 plus 6, 21 lakhs. Which house in block YY has parking space E1 and only E1? 